Have you ever stopped to wonder what happened to Jesus between the ages of 12 and 30? Or what happened to his disciples and mother after the crucifixion? What if I told you that Jesus traveled to places like England as a young boy? According to some ancient legends, he traveled with his wealthy uncle, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a successful trader. They say he didn't just stay in Israel, he journeyed to distant lands, learning from the greatest teachers of that time. The Bible doesn't contain this, but generations have passed down the stories. Following the crucifixion, the target group included Joseph, Mother Mary, and several disciples. There was a secret plan to get rid of them, quietly, without causing an uprising. The Romans didn't want to execute them outright, so instead they put them on a boat with no oars, no food, and no way to survive. They drifted on the Mediterranean Sea, doomed to perish. Instead of perishing, they somehow made it across the sea and arrived on the coast of France. It seems as though an unseen force guided them. This event is so miraculous, yet it's one of the greatest untold stories. Today, this place is known as Sainte Marie de la Mer, and it holds a special place in history, marking the legendary arrival of Jesus' family and followers in France. Once they reached France, the survivors split up, with some continuing their journey to other parts of Europe. Joseph of Arimathea, in particular, made his way to England. This wasn't entirely unexpected, as he had been involved in trade with England for years. Legends claim that Joseph brought the young Jesus along on his previous trips, leading to the establishment of the first Christian church outside of Israel in Glastonbury, England. People often place the founding of the world's first Christian community by Joseph and his followers around AD 63. Some argue that the early church's growing structure, which desired a centralized, controlled narrative, excluded these stories because they didn't fit. Joseph's journey to England didn't just spread the teachings of Jesus. It laid the foundation for the way a system of gathering that was very different from what we now think of as a church. These early Christians didn't have grand cathedrals or strict hierarchies. They gathered in homes, sharing knowledge, meditating and healing. This was how Jesus taught them to live, freely and without centralised authority figures. They didn't even call the church in Glastonbury a church in the traditional sense, it was simply a place for people to come together and follow the way. Meanwhile, Mary Magdalene travelled to what is now France, where she is believed to have continued spreading Jesus' teachings. Lazarus also made his way to France, founding another Christian centre there. Their influence spread throughout Europe, quietly planting the seeds of early Christianity far from the heart of the Roman Empire. Ancient records and archaeological discoveries show traces of these early Christian communities. Even today, the legacy of these hidden chapters in Jesus' story lingers in the places they visited. We all face moments when life seems like it will crush us, and finding answers seems impossible. In those moments, having more understanding, clarity and guidance can make a difference, and that is exactly what Band Scretz the lost knowledge of Jesus offers a path to clarity and peace through the hidden teachings of Jesus. If you are seeking clarity and hope, this ebook could be a lifesaver for you. The best part is, you can download it as a gift from the first comment posted. This ebook could be exactly what you need today. Throughout history, there has been a natural struggle between what people believe through faith and what historical evidence shows. Many people base their faith on their spiritual convictions and the inherited teachings. Trust, the stories in religious texts and traditions passed down from generation to generation serve as its foundation. But history works differently. Facts, documents, artifacts and physical evidence traceable back through time are the foundation of history. Archaeological findings and centuries-old documents point to the possibility that the stories about Joseph of Arimathea, 
Mary and other disciples traveling to distant lands are real. The early church, which formed after Jesus' death, had a huge responsibility. They had to create a unified message to spread Jesus' teachings to the world. And as the church became more organized, with popes and bishops and religious councils, they chose which stories to focus on and which ones to leave out. Their aim was to establish a distinct, unified story that would foster the growth of Christianity. Yet this resulted in the omission of some stories, such as the expeditions to England and France. The official canon did not include these, leading to their near forgetfulness over time. But just because they aren't in the Bible doesn't mean they didn't happen. Historians have found references to these journeys in places you wouldn't expect. Ancient texts, regional legends, even songs from the people who lived in those areas long ago. In Glastonbury, for instance, there's a long-held tradition that Jesus once walked on those very lands. It's also said that Joseph of Arimathea built the first Christian church there, long before Christianity became the major religion it is today. These stories have endured through local culture and folklore, even though they aren't part of mainstream religious teachings. Faith often asks believers to accept the Bible as the complete story, while history continues to dig up new evidence that may challenge that understanding. However, we can view this conflict as an opportunity rather than a source of division. These new discoveries can unnerve individuals deeply rooted in their faith. It can be difficult to accept that the stories they've grown up with may not be the whole picture. But here's the thing. Faith and history don't always have to be at odds. They can work together. History can provide context, filling in gaps and helping us better understand the time and place where these events took place. And faith can give meaning to those discoveries, showing how they fit into the broader spiritual journey. The life of Jesus, his disciples, and the people closest to him is filled with these untold secrets. Local legends, historical clues, and even ancient writings support some of these stories, which, despite not being part of the official narrative, suggest there's more to learn. It challenges the traditional ideas of how Christianity spread and grew. Instead of an organized religion led by a few powerful figures, these early followers practiced something much more fluid, where everyone had a voice. The more we delve into the past, the more we uncover the omissions, leaving us to piece together the fragments. The journey of Joseph and his companions is one of many examples of how much more we can learn about early Christianity. The first followers of Jesus didn't rely on priests, bishops or central figures to guide them. Instead, they practiced their faith in a decentralized manner, giving every believer a voice. This was the way, and it was far from the formalized church structures that developed later on. In the early days after Jesus' death, his followers didn't gather in grand cathedrals or churches. Instead, they met in small groups, usually in homes, where anyone could share what they had learned. These gatherings were all about open discussion, healing, and spiritual growth, without the need for an official leader telling them what to believe. It was a direct reflection of how Jesus lived and taught, and it was far more organic and free-flowing than the rigid systems that would later define Christianity. There were no set doctrines or commandments from above. Instead, each person was free to contribute and interpret the message in their own way. This was a far cry from the future systems of organized religion where popes, bishops and other officials would dictate what could be preached and practiced. This decentralized approach to faith wasn't just about a lack of leadership. It was a conscious effort to stay true to what Jesus had intended. The early Christians believed that everyone had the ability to connect with God directly without needing a mediator. This was a revolutionary idea at the time, and it empowered people in a way that organized religion didn't. Faith in these gatherings was personal and shared, not under the control of a few powerful individuals. 
But as Christianity grew and spread, this simple and inclusive way of practicing faith began to change. The early church leaders wanted more structure, and with that came rules, hierarchies, and control. What started as a free-flowing, open community began to transform into an institution with strict guidelines. Over time, this decentralized way of worshipping faded into the background, replaced by a more formalized church system that many are familiar with today. This shift wasn't just about organization, it was about power. With centralized authority, the church could control the message and ensure that everyone followed the same teachings. While this consolidation of power facilitated the growth of Christianity into a major religion, it also resulted in the marginalization of the individual voices and personal interpretations that had previously played a central role in the faith. High-ranking officials, who now controlled the teachings, no longer shared the message in small, intimate gatherings. The decentralization of religious authority wasn't just a style of worship. It was a philosophy that allowed people to explore their faith more freely. It gave believers the opportunity to question, to learn from one another, and to grow spiritually without fear of being wrong or out of line with official teachings. It was a dynamic, evolving form of faith, rooted in personal connection rather than rigid structure. If you've enjoyed this journey through the hidden stories of history and faith, and if you're finding value in uncovering these forgotten truths, consider supporting us by using the Super Thanks button below. Your support means the world to us, and it helps keep these stories alive. Early Christianity's decentralization of religious authority provides a profound insight into the practice and sharing of faith. It wasn't defined by rigid structures or controlled by a single hierarchy. Instead, it was organic, personal and flexible allowing for a variety of voices and interpretations. We valued each person's contribution and valued their perspectives. This decentralized approach contests the prevalent perception of religion being under the control of a select few. It serves as a reminder that faith doesn't have to adhere to strict rules or institutions. It can be a shared experience that develops through community and personal connection. At its core, Faith is about a relationship between the individual, their community, and the divine. The issue is not control or who can dictate beliefs. Each believer cultivates a personal connection through dialogue, shared experiences, and mutual respect, which strengthens the power of faith. This way of thinking was central to the early Christians, and it allowed them to thrive even in times of danger and uncertainty. For example, the story of escaping with other disciples and family members after the crucifixion speaks to the resilience and strength of early believers. Cast out into the Mediterranean Sea with no means of survival, they weren't just physically adrift. They were spiritually navigating the uncertain waters of what their faith meant after Jesus' death. In addition to survival, their journey showed the power of belief and the guidance they felt during this dangerous time. The fact that they reached the shores of France without any help but their faith is a powerful image that reflects the deep personal conviction that drove them forward. This idea challenges the common narrative that centers Jesus' life solely in Israel, revealing a more complex history where Jesus and his teachings had a far-reaching influence before his public ministry began. It suggests that the early spread of Christianity wasn't just an isolated event, but part of a broader, interconnected history that spanned different cultures and regions. Organized religion left these stories out of the Bible and overlooked them, but they offer a glimpse into a version of Christianity that is more intimate more freeform, and perhaps even more aligned with the personal, spiritual journey that Jesus himself intended. 
the early Christians didn't need large institutions or formal rituals to connect with their faith. Instead, they gathered in small groups in homes, sharing knowledge, meditating and healing together. This was the way, a decentralized open practice where every person had something to contribute. The idea that faith itself is deeply personal aligns with the decentralized nature of these early gatherings. Religious authorities did not impose a strict doctrine on them. Instead, it was about seeking answers together, asking questions, and continually uncovering deeper truths. In these groups, there was room for interpretation, for exploration, and for finding new insights that resonated with each individual's spiritual journey. This decentralized model of faith is something we can still learn from today. It reminds us that the pursuit of understanding and truth is an ongoing process, one that doesn't end with a single book or a set of rules. Instead, it invites us to keep seeking, keep questioning, and keep exploring the rich and complex history of our beliefs. The revelations that come from this exploration challenge us to view our faith in a different light, not as something fixed, but as something that grows and evolves as we discover more about ourselves and our spiritual heritage. In many ways, the decentralization of religious authority in early Christianity represents a return to the essence of faith. Fostering a deep, personal connection with the divine and each other was more important than power or control. The lessons we learn from these hidden stories, like those of Joseph of Arimathea and the early gatherings of believers, encourage us to embrace the idea that faith can be practiced in countless ways. The questions we pose today are the key to unlocking the truths of tomorrow. These hidden chapters of early Christianity don't just change how we view the past, they help us rethink what faith means to us in the present. Thanks for watching. Be part of our community by subscribing to this channel. Until the next video.